Moon Platoon, the rocket has not yet launched and there's still space for you and space for people who I want to give a shout out to. Andrew, uh, my little girl is in the truck and they would love a shout out, McKenna. You and your dad are ready to head over to Valhalla with us. Let's take a look at what happened in the markets today. We had a major crash of 60% and counting of major federal securities, thanks to uh, some journalism from Dewar Cars showing us a Bloomberg article. Excuse me. Oh, I caught that sneeze. And if you guys want to cash that like button until it gets all the way up to 2700, people need to know about what the hedge fund suing the US government did and exactly why the Supreme Court shot them down. So this is an article from the Financial Times telling us about the US Supreme Court deals a blow to the Fannie and Freddie stakeholders. DeWar Cars even sent us screenshots of just how bad this is. Federal national blah, 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 federal national blah, 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 blah. These are preferred stocks of these Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac uh, federal securities, and they are all down 60%, 59, 57, etc. It goes on and on. So that hive mind working on your behalf to make sure that you guys know that the markets may have just seen the beginning of a major bet against it play out. We're going to talk to you about that and how it relates to the stock market. I also wanted to point out that some of you have been asking questions such as, uh, can you do a quick uh, tutorial on Lux Algo? And what if Lux was able to show us that this crash was imminent and when to get back in, including Mexicanos del Mundo. Thanks for the Lux. Just got Lux Algo. Thanks for the recommendation. What chart time frame and all these other questions. Let's try to answer them in this video right now. But first, what exactly happened? Mortgage finance agencies' shares plunge after decisions stemming from government conservatorship. Uh, hedge funds that have spent more than five years suing the U.S. government to try and wring some value from their investments in the nationalized mortgage giants Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac were dealt a severe setback by the Supreme Court today. Shares in Fannie and Freddie plunged by more than a third after the ruling, which threw out some of the investors' claims that the U.S. Treasury had illegally pulled more than $100 billion of profits from the two companies. So the U.S. government had taken control of the Fannie Mae and the, after the financial crisis of 2008. In fact, here is a quick clip from that, that time period. You can even tell from the graininess of the video and the hairstyle and the dress code and everything else about this New York Times video. It's going to be less than 60 seconds. Let's take a listen. When it took over Fannie Mae last month, it was the spark that started this current economic crisis. Now, up until this point, Fannie Mae was the most important mortgage company in the world. What Fannie Mae did was that they would buy loans from lenders and other companies, repackage them, and then sell them to investors. The lenders would get fresh capital that they could use to make more loans. Investors would get these great mortgage-backed securities, and Fannie would take a fee for guaranteeing that the borrowers were going to pay off their debts. So in a lot of ways, they're the lubricant that makes the housing economy go. What my story in the New York Times explains is how Fannie Mae went from being a pillar of the housing economy, one of the safest institutions in the United States, to a company that continuously was buying riskier and riskier loans. Understanding the decisions that were made by Fannie Mae and by some of its executives and by regulators are key to understanding why this financial crisis has played out the way that it has. One of those key characters is Dan Mudd, who headed Fannie Mae starting in 2004 until it was taken over by the government last month. And we're not even joking around. Yes, he is Mudd, and he was taking control of the Fannie. So one of the more important pieces of why this is important is what happened in 2008. How is it happening right now? And the signs of which we've been talking about for months and why will this soon trickle down through the entire economy? And today was the very first blow to that. Shortly after Mr. Mudd took the head position of Fannie Mae, he had a meeting with Countrywide Financial, the nation's largest lender. In that meeting, the head of Countrywide Financial said to him, we've had a great relationship, but if you don't start buying my riskier loans, I'm gonna cut you off. This was a huge threat to Fannie Mae. They were already losing market share to a whole bunch of Wall Street banks. And so what Mr. Mudd did is he steered Fannie Mae into riskier loans. Moreover, lawmakers were constantly pressuring Mr. Mudd and Fannie Mae to buy more and more loans from low-income homeowners, who are typically some of the riskiest bets. 
When the housing market started going belly up in 2007, all of a sudden Fannie Mae realized that it might be on the hook for billions and billions of dollars. And as we know, beginning in 2007, that's exactly what happened. Which is why last month, the federal government had to take over Fannie Mae and its cousin, Freddie Mac. At a and that was last month, uh, 12, 13 years ago. So Fannie and Freddie, which guarantee a large share of mortgages in the US, have been under government's conservatorship since their bailout during the 2008 financial crash. Preferred shares uh, who were hit heavily by the ruling, the most uh, the most heavily traded of them falling by more than 60%. What did the Supreme Court justice rule? They rejected the claim that the Federal fi Housing Finance Agency, which oversees Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, had exceeded its authority under federal law by engaging in a profit sweep in 2012 to reclaim taxpayer dollars used to bail out the two firms. The justices did rule that the shareholders could proceed with a claim that the FHFA's structure was unconstitutional since the agency's director was not sufficiently accountable to the president. So that is uh, another change that you will see right here. Fannie Freddie plunge as high court deals blow to investors. Oh, wait, hold on. I wanted to be able to find the one where they talk about uh, the Biden administration taking over. Hold on a second. This is what happens when I prepare every video except that one. Here it is. This is a Wall Street Journal article, Biden administration now to replace that Fannie Freddie overseer after court reading, ruling that uh, Fannie Freddie overseer was named Mr. Calibria. He is a Trump administration holdover who pushed aggressively to end Fannie and Freddie's dozen years under government control. Essentially, he was the boss that said, I don't want to be your boss. I want to be your friend. I want you to be privatized again. Well, the high court's decision came in a long running battle stemming from the government takeover in 2008. Now, it, uh, Supreme Court Justice, the Supreme Court, in opinion by Justice Samuel Alito, ruled that profit sweep didn't exceed the agency's statutory authority and over ordered the dismissal of shareholder claims on that issue. So now it will be a brand new Mr. Calabria because it is the change that it might rock the bedrock of the foundation of the economy. So this is the beginning of something major. And that's why we're going to have Austin Tobit come on Friday and talk about his opinions of what exactly this was uh, a forewarning to. Let's take a look at whether or not we could have predicted this. Let's go as close as possible to look at this strong sell signal over on Lux Algo. So Lux Algo gave us that strong sell signal, seemingly like the candle or two right before the crash. Even if Lux could not have predicted the justices come out with that decision right away, if this was pointing to this candle, you would have uh, either sold at $7 or right here at the bottom of this candle at $5.99. So that's a dollar difference, but at least you would have saved the 60% difference all the way to the bottom. Because of the oscill Lux Oscillator tool, let me move Joshua's comment here so that I can see it. The Lux Oscillator tool gives you the opportunity to see when bullish momentum turns bearish and vice versa. So it had a major divergence until it started to peter out. This uh, comb over, you can call it, is where the bullish momentum is starting to take effect. And that is where if you bought in uh, a fire sale at the bottom of 230, you would now be up to 280 or up 30% or so. And now you have to take a look at when that bullish momentum is going to cross over again to bearish. So once again, great tool for scalping, dangerous if you don't know how to do day trading. Uh, and especially if you're a beginner, this is just good as a simulation, maybe for paper accounts so that you can track your progress and learn more from the right signals. So Michael Burry deleted his account a few days ago, said the mother of all crashes is on its way. Will it and what will it do for the rest of this market? One of the first things that I have to say is that a forewarning from the overall pieces of the market is is guaranteed to be a dangerous part of liquidity processes, which is the NSCC 002, having its effect taken either today or tomorrow with margin calls following a day to five days later. So even if we see 002 implemented today, uh, which is going to be covered in the video that I'm going to upload right after this one, you will likely still have to deal with the downstream effects of, of margin calls happening after supplementary liquidity deposits are not met. And having these mortgages 
excuse me, these uh, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac mortgage-based uh, signs that 2008 is repeating itself is not a good sign for the margin call possibility. Remember, it's about how much money the hedge funds have to avoid a potential margin call. So ring ring, who is that? Margin is calling. We're gonna be tracking this each and every day. Hey, like I said, there is room on this rocket ship. So if you guys still want to be able to jump in and join the Moon Platoon, there is multiple different ways to do so. First thing is that we are doing a competition all the way up to 111,111 subscribers. We are asking you guys to submit your art to Twitter or Instagram at Andrew Mo Money. Just send a PNG or a JPEG of your art of either me, Professor Meatball, it could look like the Professor Meatball right here, or it could look like a realistic version of him. Either way, we will, st we will talk about either displaying your art prominently, we'll have first, second, and third place winners, and we can even talk about putting your uh, designs on an official merch in the Andrew Mo Money merch store, such as seeing the brand new merch here uh the meatball subs right this was actually fan art from the moon platoon long ago so if you guys wanted to be able to interact with the different kind of merch or be able to win some on random giveaways that we have throughout the day bell to bell when our live stream then go ahead and hop into angemomoney.com to take a look at the merch that we have down there and thank the ones that have taken the extra step to click that join button next to the subscribe button and now get featured prominently in the end screen moon platoon grillionaire and the space legends thank you all so much and we'll see all of you in the money peace